who's starting to build on. Now this is this is lower RPM, high boost, high load. It's not supposed to be here. This car shouldn't be here right now, but it is. Why is it here? Let me tell you why it's here. So after handing it off to the new owner, he reported that the car was awfully bucky on tipping, for throttle tipping, and he didn't like how it drove. So I had him bring it back. I, we did some things to make sure that everything was accounted for. So I put new plugs in it, changed this fuel filter. Um, I put a wide band in it, went out and checked the, the tune on it. It's lean. Whole car is lean. Much leaner than when it was when it was in my car. So I want to take this moment to talk a little bit about tuning and hopefully kind of clear up some of the, uh, the questions because I get a lot of questions from you guys asking me for my tuned maps from my cars and I'm often reluctant to give them out because it's just, it, it really, you really just can't take a map out of one car, put it in another car and expect it to work. You have way too many variables into the mix and I know nobody else has my same exact setup, right? Doubt it, maybe. Maybe one of you guys out there actually copied everything to a T and if you did, kudos. But, but here's the thing, so, so get this. So I gave him everything from my Turbo Miata because this was supposed to be a plug and play turnkey swap, right? So let's just kinda, let's just kinda go over some of the stuff here real quick, right? So not only did he get my exact engine, he got my whole ignition system, my ignition coils, my wires, plugs. He got my Vortec fuel pressure regulator. It's a fuel pressure regulator. Don't call it an FMU. It still increases fuel pressure. You can change the disc versus tuning a screw. Same shit. He has my FMU with a 3 to 1 disc in it. He has my fuel injectors. He has my Mega Squirt plug and play ECU that's tuned for this car. He has my air intake temperature sensor, has my boost controller, has my coil radiator, has all my intercooler piping, has my alternator. I even gave him, I got, I got so nervous when I was doing the swap that something was going to be off. I gave him my fuel pump, which is a, an RX-7 wall, bro, that I modified to fit this car. I gave him my whole sending unit. So this is literally every single component that ran this engine from my car into here. And the tune is still off. It's lean, too lean. Like lean to the point where like, it wasn't pinging when I took it for a ride because I have a pretty good ear for detonation at this point. But it was lean enough where it would have it severely reduced the life of the motor um, and damaged it in the long run. So, what can we learn from this? Well, no matter what you do, you can, well, first of all, I have, I have one rule. And my rule is always, you can never trust what somebody says. If somebody says a car's tuned and you buy a modified car, you should still get a wide band, put it in the car, make sure you know what you're looking for and go through the entire tune. You have to. This is the whole same setup and it's wrong and it needed, the car needed to be retuned. We just, we just, finish retuning it over the course of this week. Going out at night, going through the entire map. Now granted, timing was already set pretty good for the most part, but we still had to change timing a little bit too. It wasn't just fuel. We're a little bit, we're scratching our heads a little bit why it was off, but a couple things. It's gotta be, it's gotta be one, we think it might be something with his electrical harness. I didn't give him my harness. I used his 90 harness, I have a 91. So if, if voltages aren't the same, Fuel pressure could be off a little bit, and that will throw everything off. Fuel pressure is critical. Um, his car is power steering, and it's heavier. 
So there's like more load just to move it. That could contribute a little bit to it. Whatever the case is, is it, it wasn't even plug and play. So somebody asking for one of my maps, thinking it's gonna work, it, it's, it's not gonna happen. You can look at my timing tables to get an idea what we're running for ignition timing. And that's maybe about as much as you're gonna extrapolate from that. You are not gonna get any, any valuable data. But I will say this, tuning is the most important aspect of a build. I mean, yes, when you get into like building bottom ends, it's like critical that stuff is like machined and clearance properly, done in the right conditions. I still think factory motors are the best motors because they're all assembled to the right clearances, right tolerances, and they're done in the right conditions, dust-free rooms. They're built the last 200,000 miles. When you're building a motor, you're not building it for reliability. You're building it because you're asking it to do more than what stock is capable of. So reliability shouldn't even like be a, be a word in that, in that sentence because you're just like, you're not getting that. And you're adding a lot more variables into the mix. But the tuning is the most critical part for it all coming together. I've watched so many cars over the years blow up and, and not make it because of bad tuning. I started modifying cars when I was 16. I'm 33 now, I'm old as shit, 17 years. You know how many people and you know how many friends I have who did stupid shit untuned, blew the car up and then like gave up? I've seen so many people drop out of the car scene because it doesn't go right and then they give up. So I'm sharing this with you guys because I think this is really important because I think it will save some of you and I hope that you can like see like what, just, you just have to have an understanding of what you can and what you can't do, right? So the tune again is the most critical com component for holding everything together. And I haven't blown up a car yet because of a bad tune. We've, most of my cars, majority of my cars have standalones. And I've had multiple cars that my, my friend and I have tuned. He's like really the, he's the, he's really the, the expert behind it. But I'm at the point now where I can, I can tune for the most part, it just takes me longer. I bring him because he's good. And I mean, it's easier with two people. It's hard when you're doing it with, by yourself on the street. And that's the other, that's the other critical component is that be wary of anybody who just tune, who, who tunes a car and just tunes it strictly on a dyno. Now, I dyno everything on a dyno jet because I like the, the data that you get from it. It's supposed to be the most accurate as far as what wheel horsepower is, like what's getting down to the ground. But when we tune, the, the process goes like this. And I, and I filmed this a little bit to show you guys like kind of um, some of what we do to just to get an idea like to how, how tuning a car actually goes. Um, the process that we follow is we tune the thing entirely on the street. So that's every cell in the map. And I'm gonna show you guys a little bit like what the tuning looks like, what the maps look like. This is Mega Squirt. This is its shitty resolution. Um, we are 500, roughly 500 RPM increments here, okay? These are your cells. This is boost pressure here. So when the car's running, you'll, you'll be in a cell, like right? So idle, you'll be idling somewhere in one of these cells down here. As you accelerate R RPM and increase RPM, your, the cell that you're in moves up. As you increase load or boost pressure, then you go up this way. We tune every one of these cells, and the way we do it is, is we get it into, like, so say, like 3,400 RPM. We, we bring the car up to 3,400 RPM. You hold the brake, and you start applying gas to increase boost or increase load, and you start going up in the, in the whole 3,400 RPM. We tune the whole row. Then we keep moving up, 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 up until the whole thing's done. Um, this is timing, ignition timing, and just a couple things here. You can see high RPM, no boost. No load, we have a lot of timing advance because the engine's spinning really fast and we can, we can advance timing a lot. Lower RPM, when there's load on the car or boost and the, and the rotating assembly's not moving as much, we have, we, ignition timing is retarded a lot because the, comb the combustion has longer to occur while the piston is, is going to top dead center, compressing everything. If you have too much timing advance, timing is like one of the silent killers of engines. I've seen people, you can have a car that's pig rich and not pinging, but if you have too much timing advance when you shouldn't, it, it will definitely prematurely wear the engine and, 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 and destroy it. Um, 
all that as you as you increase in advanced timing you can feel the engine get more angry sounding and it gets a little bit more like Honda VTEC and like a little bit more rough that is all translating down to the rotating assembly if you can get away with less timing usually that's the better route to take and I think that's been one of the critical components to like why a lot of my builds haven't blown up. I can't tell you guys how many Miata guys have said like, oh, a stock Miata engine can't really do more than 225 with the wheels and the stock internals. And a lot of times it's just because they had a shitty tune or they had too much timing advance. So this is like a real critical thing here. And it's, you know, I'm not going to go over the whole, the whole everything because every motor is different. This is a turbo engine. So you could see like under high boost, 18, 19 pounds, you know, higher RPM. There's not much time, ignition timing advance there. Seven degrees, that's nothing. You know, and the engine gets more flat sounding up there, but that is what keeps it together because you're not, you're not translating that, that load down to the rotating assembly. So enough about timing because I can go on and on all day about it, but the other, the other place that you're going to spend a lot of time is your fuel table. So I'll show you my fuel map here. And you can see around here, 4,600, 5,200 RPM. You can see like we're, we're high duty cycle here on the injectors. Um, this, there's more load on the engine here and boost is coming on hard. So like, you know, it's got to be, the, the, the tune is going to be a little bit more rich here. You can see like low load stuff, it's, it's leaned out, less duty cycle. So this is what we do. We go through the whole thing, bring the car to the dyno, put it on the rollers, load changes. They're supposed to simulate the load of the dyno. Sorry, my white balance is trying to correct itself right now. Dyno can, can simulate road conditions, but it's not exact. So we tune, we final tune the ignition stuff your timing because for final numbers you can't feel what little changes are doing on the street if they're like making the, the engine happier if they're making more power or whatever I mean if too much you can obviously tell if the engine's not happy if it sounds a certain way if it's not too smooth um, so we get our final numbers take the car off the dyno and then we have to go through the whole map again not like rat like drastically retune everything but there's always adjustments that have to be made, especially on a turbo car high boost turbo cars are affected the most because the load changes as you get back on the road so somebody who just tunes a car like strictly on the dyno a lot of times they just they just tune the wide open throttle stuff and then they give the car back and it drives like shit if you want the car to like work well and like have like smooth throttle transitions throughout every rpm throughout every load that's what it takes all my cars have no less than 20 hours into the tuning on the streets to get everything down like and, and, and tune it correctly and that's tune on the street bring it to the dyno get numbers and finish the timing stuff because again you can't feel those changes on the street exactly and then take it off and then retune so everything's safe it's a lot it's a lot to deal with and anybody who if you're getting into the tuning stuff i think that's great but like you have to be careful Turbo stuff especially because you can like really hurt the engine pretty quickly. Um, so it's not just detonation, it's not just air fuel. You have to kind of know what air fuel the car should be at. And there's like some things that you could do to calculate that like rod to stroke ratio, what piston speeds are. Um, you have to know like what loads you should kind of be at like ballpark. And some engines just like different things. So every, there's no universal value. And everybody's gonna have a different answer. But I can just say that I'm confident what we have done, because you guys know how I drive. I don't baby the cars. And like maybe, I don't think it's just dumb luck. I'm gonna knock on wood. But I don't think it's just dumb luck that none of my cars have like blown up. So tuning is very critical. Do not, do not, do not like turbocharge your car, supercharge your car, then go like, go for a test drive and like get on it when it's untuned. I've seen so many people do that and blow up. Don't do that stuff. Tuning is everything. I hope that that's sinking in now. Tuning is everything. So I want to share this with you guys because there's a lot that goes into it. And, and there's definitely no like one thing fits all. Especially like a lot of these modern cars, like you could buy chips and all that other flash tunes. I hate that shit because you don't know what it's at. You're, it's like, a, it, to me, it's like a guess. Every car, like even if they're the same car, like I still think there's little variables that change things. And this is a great example of it. So to not go into this too much more into the tuning thing, but after we're done doing timing and fuel, it's all the temperature corrections. And that's like, and that's its own thing there. So air temperature correction, cooling temperature correction, voltage temperature or voltage corrections. So if you start losing voltage on the fuel pump and it starts leaning out the car, I mean, there's corrections for everything. And those are like kind of like the key 
to keep the car operating the way it should be under like different temperature changes. So on a very hot day versus a very cold day, you're still within the range of where the car should be in the tune. And we don't tune on the ragged edge. We leave a little bit of margin of error. And that's just for the safety of it because in case we can't account for a certain condition, you know, in case there's a little bit of error somewhere, it, it gives you that safety room. So like, yeah, my cars would probably make a little bit more horsepower if we just tuned a little bit more on the ragged edge, but then it's like, at what cost? Is it really worth having an extra like 10 horsepower at the, you know, throwing reliability out the window? Probably not. At least for me, it's not. So guys, I'm gonna leave you with a video I, to kind of demonstrate what we're doing, a clip that I took. Um, it's kind of hard to see what's going on because it, it, we do it at night. It's already hard to do this like with, with you know, just two people alone, but doing it at night and, and everything else, like the camera was having a hard time picking up the wideband, but just to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like, like loading each cell on the map and holding the, and holding the car with the brakes. So that's it for this one, guys. And I'm gonna drop this clip now, but until next time, done. All right, guys, so here's a little demonstration of what we do when we're doing a street tune. So right now, the green cell is our active cell. This is where we are on the map. This is our fuel table. This is where we spend the majority of our time tuning. Uh, timing is pretty clear once you, once you get through it. Um, I'm not sure if you can really see air-fuel ratio here, picking up on the camera. But this is just light cruise, so that's, that's fine. 14s are fine for like a light throttle cruise. So I'm just gonna give you an example, and I'm not sure if you can be able to see what are you doing, you maniac? <laughs> so I'm just gonna give you guys an example. Um, we're gonna, we'll check like 30, so these are our RPM ranges down here at the bottom. This is boost pressure on the left, and we're gonna check 3,400 RPM. So we're gonna check all the cells in here, and when we do this is by using the accelerator and holding the brake as boost builds, our, our, our cells are gonna go up on the map because this is our boost range right here. Go ahead, Karen. So while we're watching this cell, keeping it in each one of these cells, you got to actually hold it in here because it's a 500 RPM transition between both cells. So we, once we get it in there steady, we can look at our air fuel to see actually what we're at. And we go through each range right the, like this all the way up till um, max boost. It takes a little bit longer than that because we're already tuned, but that's what we do through each cell. And then let's, let's show them how difficult this gets as we start doing some of the higher RPM stuff. So let's do, let's, let's get up for uh, 5,700 or 6,000 or so.